Now it is a curious thing that although everybody knows, and what a horrible amount of misinformation that statement lets circulate, it is human to err. The sentient portion of the mind, which computes the answers to problems and which makes man man, is utterly incapable of error. This was a startling discovery when it was made, but it need not have been. It could have been deduced some time before, for it is quite simple and easy to understand. The actual computing ability of man is never in error, even in a very severely aberrated person. Observing the activity of such an aberrated person, one might thoughtlessly suppose that that person's computations were wrong. But that would be an observer error. Any person, aberrated or clear, computes perfectly on the data stored and perceived. Take any common calculating machine, and the mind is an exceptionally magnificent instrument, far, far superior to any machine it will invent for ages to come, and put a problem on it for solution. Multiply seven times one. It will answer properly seven. Now multiply six times one, but continue to hold down the seven. Six times one is six, but the answer you will get is 42. Continue to hold down seven and put other problems on the machine. They are wrong, not as problems, but as answers. Now fix seven so that it stays down no matter what keys are touched and try to give the machine away. Nobody will want it because obviously the machine is crazy. It says 10 times 10 is 700. But is the calculating portion of the machine really wrong? Or is it merely being fed the wrong data? In the same way, the human mind being called upon to resolve problems of a magnitude and with enough variables to confound any mere calculating machine a thousand times an hour is prey to incorrect data. Incorrect data gets into the machine. The machine gives wrong answers. Incorrect data enters the human memory banks. The person reacts in an abnormal manner. Essentially then, the problem of resolving aberration is the problem of finding a held down seven.